Welcome to another teacher tip from Mr. Long. And in this video, we're going to be looking at Google Forms. And this is part one of a three part series that's going to show you how you can create forms and how you can get the data from those forms. So let's start. What, what is, first of all, what is a Google form? Well, if you've got a, a Gmail account, if, you, if you've got any uh, Gmail account, you have access to Google Forms. Now, Google Forms allows you to create online forms that people can fill in. And you can use it for a quiz. You can use it for a survey. There are lots of powerful things that you can do with these forms. So yeah, I'm on the Google Forms uh, advert for their, their product. And there you can see, like, if you want to get information about someone, like, enter their name and what they feel about certain things, getting answers fast, that's the idea behind Google Forms. So, if you've got a Gmail account, it's very easy. All you need, if you've got a Gmail account, you can get one. Um, if you go to the Waffle over there, the Google Apps, um, and you'll go to your Google Drive. So, if you go to your Google Drive, I've already just created a folder in my Google Drive. I've got nothing in it at the moment. Um, this is like a folder structure. And if you go to your Google Drive, and you see, you'll all see this plus new. So if I click on it, you'll see I can add lots of options. And there is a Google form. Now you can add, they give you two options. There are templates available, but we can have a blank form. That's normally for like a, some sort of survey, or you can have a quiz. Now most defaults are going to make forms, and you can actually change the form into a quiz from the setting. So I'll just show you how to do a form, and then you can change that to a quiz at a later stage. So let's start with the form. So I click on a blank form, and this is what it looks like. It takes me to a brand new tab. So it's going to load Google Forms, and this is the, the, the layout so far. So first of all, we can give our Google Form a lovely little title over here. So let's stick with the camping idea. Let's say we're going to do some sort of uh, camp for the students, and we want to get some details from them before the camp. So let's say that this is the grade 12 uh, student leader camp. So we've got a nice little camp form here. So you can give it a nice little title over here. It'll duplicate it there. We can put it a little description in here. It's always good to give instructions and so on. So you can do that. Please uh, fill in all the details. So we can do that. And so let's start with our questions. First of all, we've got a whole bunch of options over here. Let's just go through from the bottom here. You can add sections. And what that does is it breaks the form into different almost pages. So you can create sections. Um, you can add a video. Maybe you want them to watch a video and then answer questions on the video. Um, you can add an image. Um, you can add a title and description. Maybe you want to break it down. This is biographical data, like what, what the details about the person, and then other questions about like their opinions. And so you can actually break it up into different sections as well through that. Um, and you can even import questions from somewhere else. But this is the one you're going to probably use the most often. You're going to click on this, and you, this allows you to add all these types of questions that you want. Now, that's if so we already had one, so I'm actually going to click on this one and just delete it. So if you've got a question you don't want, you can simply just delete it. So here we go. We've got a question, and here we've got the options that are available to us. We are going to do a couple of them in this video, and we'll do some of the others in another video. So the most... So you get short answers. Mr. Long doesn't like short answers because I'm Mr. Long. But yeah, we got short answers. That's good for like one word questions or just a couple of texts and stuff like that. So you can write your questions. This in a survey situation, this is what you would use for your surname. So they can write in their, their surname. That's very easy. And you can make it required if you want to make sure that they have to fill it in. And it will actually tell them that it's required if you want them to fill that in. You do also have these other options available. You can have validation. In other words, you can say it must be a number or it must be text that contains a certain thing. So you've got all these little options that maybe there's a certain length that you don't want to allow them to go beyond that type of thing. And so those are options available to you. I'm just going to close. I don't want that validation. But you do have those options if you want it to be quite specific with the answers that they are giving. So that's an example of a short answer. You would do the same for the name and so on. Um, so we're going to add another question. There you can see the little star saying that's compulsory. Um, now we've done a short answer. Now maybe you want a paragraph. Maybe you want to give them, give them the option to write a few more things like, why, um, what you plan to learn on this camp. Maybe they require a bit more text to be able to type in. Let me change that H. And that's a paragraph. And again, there's options available about validation and so on. Like we can make it required and so on. So there we go. So there's a paragraph option. And then I'm going to add another question. 
And now let's go to the next option. Now, multiple choice is quite often used for surveys and to get people's opinions. So we're going to stick with the multiple choice, the most popular one. So you can say uh, you can use this for, for example, um, which class are you in? Which class? Maybe the students are in different classes. Which class are you in? Um, and you can say, okay, there's class A. Um, and you can say there's a B class and there's a C and it's quite predictive. It actually tries to predict stuff for you as well. You can also add an other option if you want to add an other and it allows this, the person to be able to add. Maybe they, they're not registered or whatever. So you can have that if you want. I'm going to leave it there so we can see what it looks like. So there we go. So that's multiple choice. That's the one that you're probably going to use the most often when you're doing surveys and asking for opinions. So let's add another question. We're going to move on to the check boxes. So we can say, okay, this is so the with the multiple choice, they can only select one of those options. With check boxes, they can select multiple options. So um activities uh you are interested in. And we can say they are interested. We're gonna do some swimming, we're gonna do some leadership training at this student leader camp, and we're gonna do some physical activity which I technically think is technically swimming uh, maybe uh, social activities maybe I should do that it's a, it's a good idea to actually plan out your survey and what your questions are before you actually try to create it so they can pick all of them they can pick one of them and so on so there we go so you can do options like that so those are check boxes and then we're gonna see let's see what else we got here and a drop down so that's Click a drop down. So this is like another way of doing a multiple choice. So um, so we can say uh, which which group do you want to be in, and then we can give multiple options. Maybe you want to be in the green group, or the blue group, or the yellow group. I don't know why there are these different groups. I'm just gonna make three different groups which group do you want to be in should probably have some grammar question marks there so there we go and um i'm going to add an, uh, two more i'm going to skip these ones for the next video but let's let's say you want to put in a date so you can actually this is ideal for your birth date birth date so you can actually enter in a birth date um stuff like that so you can add those type of things um, you can actually include the time if you want, if you want. So that's, you can include the time if you want. It adds the time as an option. Uh, we're going to say no. Or you can just simply, if you change, if you say you want to include time, but you don't want to include the year, you can do that as well. So that you do have those options. Maybe you just want to date without the year. You can do that. And that works very similar to what the time option does. So you do have an option for time, uh, time to arrive. Or time you can arrive time you can arrive and they can specify the time and so that's what it looks like so let's that's designing your questions we've done an example of all the different types of questions that you could get um some quick things before we go look at what it's going to look like you can change what the the theme is so you can actually have a nice header image you can go get one you can change the color that you want for your particular image or you can go add a custom color and you can specify maybe which ones you want and you can change the different fonts maybe you want a descriptive or formal or playful so you do do have those options available to you and over here just to, so if you came here to general settings you can say collect emails or collect responses which we'll discuss in, in a later stage you can uh, make presentations to show some sort of progress bar to see how far they are in the quiz or in the survey and if you want to convert this to a quiz you just come over here to quizzes we'll cover that in another video um, so there we go so i'm going to cancel those those changes so let's go look at what this all looks like so when i click on that r we can now see what the form is going to look like so when i click on the form there we go so this is what will, the form will look like when we send it out to people to fill in so there we go it says there we go so we can see that's required we can see long answers we can type in this oh that we have to put in this that won't allow me to put in so and this one this is a required question and we can just blah 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 yeah yeah yeah. that's what we want and which clock so there's our multiple choice so you see if we click other we can actually specify an other option over here if we wanted to or we could just select one of those options here is the check boxes we can select all of them or some of them 
Here is an example of the drop down. So there you can see it's very similar to the multiple choice. And the date, we can specify the date. It looks like a calendar option and we can click on which day we want to go to and so on and pick a particular date. And the same can happen for the time. So you can actually type in a particular time if you want to. 1.05 a.m. There we go. So you can do that. So that's what it looks like. In our next video, we will show you the other options available to you for stuff that you can fill in, as well as some of more about the settings. So there we go. So that's how you can get started with your Google Form. So just a reminder, when you go to um, your Google Drive, you can go New, and you can go to Google Form. There you can see my form's already saved. So in the next video, we're going to go edit it. The other parts of this video series on Google Forms will be available on our YouTube channel. You can click on that subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, and you'll get a notification when it gets uploaded. And remember, don't do it the long way. Do it the Mr. Long Way.